Alice in Wonderland, 2010, this movie is already over 14 years old now visually stunning, yet emotionally vacuous, Alice in Wonderland again seems a better idea in theory than in actuality. Tim Burton remains one of cinema's most unique visualists, but his ability to convey true emotion on the screen remains patchy. Summary, Director, Tim Burton Year of Release, 2009 Principal Cast, Johnny Depp, Mia Vosikulska, Helena Bonham Carter, Crispin Glover, Voices of Alan Rickman, Timothy Spall, Christopher Lee, Michael Goff, Michael Sheen, Stephen Fry. Approximately running time, 108 minutes synopsis. Alice returns to Wonderland, on a quest to defeat the Jabberwocky and save the land from the evil clutches of the Red Queen. Along the way she reunites with the Cheshire Cat, the Mad Hatter, Tweedledum and Tweedledee, and the pot-smoking caterpillar. What do we think? Visually stunning, yet emotionally vacuous, Alice in Wonderland again seems a better idea in theory than in actuality. Tim Burton remains one of cinema's most unique visualists, but his ability to convey true emotion on the screen remains patchy at best. I'm not sure which is better, the idea of Tim Burton directing something, or the realization of that idea. Personally, I go with the former, rather than the latter. It seems to me that while Burton is capable of delivering some truly awe-inspiring visual ideas, when it comes to characters and actually getting them to emote, he's a little bereft of success. Films such as Sleepy Hollow, Big Fish, Planet of the Apes, Sweeney Todd and most recently Charlie and The Chocolate Factory have all been astonishing projects for their complex visuals, but have nominally left us wanting on an emotional level. The ideas and concepts in this film are often unsupported by character development beyond the cartoonish, and his inability to direct truly straight material may stem out of this. In any case, I was, like the majority of the Western world, keen to see how he did with the right up his alley weird Alice in Wonderland remake. With eyebrows like this I don't need to act. In the interests of complete review disclosure, I'll state right now I don't really like the Lewis Carroll story of Alice and her zany adventures in Loopyland at all. The Disney cartoon version, the version most of us have come to know the story through, is a gorgeous sample of art and animation, but as a story, rings hollow to me. I don't see what the big deal is, but the appeal is, of a young girl forced to endure idiotic conversations and cruel, unhinged characters, in the name of a story. Why this story has appealed to filmmakers and audiences for years is also beyond me, because I can't seem to get it. But as with any story of the magical or bizarre, Tim Burton's kooky imagination was always going to do it the most justice, at least, visually anyway. So I approached this film version with a sense of impending meh. Based on both Alice's adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass, the books by Lewis Carroll, Burton's Wonderland is indeed a magically fair tale place. Burton's sense of style and whimsy come to play big time here, his iconic designs, making yet another reappearance, can the man not make a tree look like an inverted twister? But once again, the emotional weight of the character goes unrealized. There's plenty to enjoy in the film, but the suffocating level of style over substance eradicates any true feelings for what's going on on screen. Even my poo is shaped like a heart. That's how predictable I am. Alice, the incredibly hard to pronounce and type Mia Vosikulska, the young Aussie girl who's made good, is stuck in a life she doesn't like. She has a recurring dream of being in a strange world where everything is topsy-turvy, while at the same time being stuck in a world that is increasingly alien to her, the real world. When she follows a strange white rabbit in a waistcoat while escaping an unwanted marriage proposal, Alice tumbles down a hole beneath a tree and ends up in a place called Dareland, populated by some of the most unimaginable creatures imaginable. At first, Alice is convinced her journey is all a dream, and resists the fact that she's actually been in Dareland before. After meeting a sword-wielding dormouse, a couple of pedgy young lads known as Twiggle and Tweedledy, and a bespectacled dodo, she is taken to meet a man known as the Hatter, Johnny Depp, who hides her from the evil clutches of the Red Queen, Helena Bonham Carter, and her henchman, Stain, the always creepy crisping glover. It seems the return of Alice is something of a prophecy in Dareland, since she is destined to battle the dragon-like Jabberwocky and return the good White Queen to her rightful place as ruler of this world. Alice isn't keen on the idea, as she doesn't see herself as any kind of hero. But, through the actions of those around her, she soon succumbs to her destiny and eventually finds her way into battle for the survival of Dareland. Not quite separated at birth the one redeeming thing Tim Burton has to work with in his projects is credibility, and this allows him to draw in the most talented people to utilize. Burton Alums Bonham Carter, Alan Rickman, as the voice of the chain-smoking caterpillar of Soling, Timothy Spall, as Baird, the bloodhound tasked with tracking Alice, Michael Goff, as a dodo's bird, and Christopher Lee, as the voice of the Jabberwocky, all join in the fun, although it's startup and relative newcomer Vosikulska with the most work to do.
Acting to blue screen and CG characters must have been hard for the young girl, but Mia performs admirably against some of literature's most iconic creations. Depp, meanwhile has a bulked up Mad Hatter role to contend with, and while initially he seems overly feminine and queer, eventually the part suits him like a glove. The Hatter is, unfortunately, the least appealing and involving of all the Derland characters, but that brings a sense of forlorn melancholy to the madness, creating a truly unique cinematic entity in itself. A particular note is Helena Bonham Carter's wonderful rendition of the Red Queen, whose constant order off with his head rings out throughout the film, often bringing the wry smile to this reviewer's face. She appears to have been given the best character, development, her role as a purely tyrannical one smoothed down to a more sympathetic villain. Glover, as Stain, delights in roles like this, and he plays it to the hilt, rolling eyeball and grimacing Jolene all working in complete synchronicity with the tone of the film. An extended cameo by Anne Hathaway as the White Queen rounds out the major roles. Glare. Grimace. Scowl. Wince. All in a day's work. Nice eye patch, loser. The basic premise of the Carol story is there, it's just had some Britannesque embellishments laid over the top and thick, goopy waffles. The production design, from the castman down to the details in the background CGI sets, is remarkable. The film is so chock full of eye candy and delightful concepts that you can almost forgive a little lightness in the dramatic storytelling. Almost. Alice, as a character, is underripped and lacks true energy, a facet derived from a thin script and not from Mia's performance. Mia is luminous as Alice, and while not a patch on, say, Mila Jovovich in the action girl stakes, holds her own among the CGI infested scenery. Linda Wolverton's script seems more intent on the visuals, rather than the action and characters, which leaves Britain plenty of time to show us cool computer graphics without really giving us anything to care about. To say I was disappointed with Alice in Wonderland would be to say I didn't enjoy that root canal last year. I didn't, but that's the problem with root canal surgery. Wonderland should have been a trippy joy, a journey to a fantastic world of imagination and fancy. My wife, Lisa. Ask me while we were watching if Walt Disney would have minded that the story was so dark and brooding. She postulated that he'd have been disappointed in the way the story was adult ed up to suit a more modern, violence-attuned audience. I tend to agree, because a fair amount of stuff in Wonderland isn't suitable for kids, at least not young children anyway. Those who might have given up through the Red Queen's armies chasing Alice through the forest in Walt's animated original would be aghast at the bloodthirsty methods and overtly nasty tone put out by Britain in this film. I dare say Walt may not have been pleased. Really? I hate how hard it is to get stains out of this damn dress. As a film, I guess it's fair to say that Alice in Wonderland achieves its goals. It's designed to entertain the middling masses, to sell more fast food in cross-promotional campaigns, and look cool in a big screen. Indeed, it does everything asked of it. Except, perhaps, entertain. Flat characters and a lack of empathy towards the audience, along with an obtuse sense of the bizarre, make Wonderland hardly wonderful and more like a holiday you can't wait to get away from. Alice in Wonderland I do wonder if the whole 3D thing clouded the project and made Britain think more about things coming out of the screen of the audience than anything else. It's that debate about 3D versus 2D, I'd much rather have the interesting and beautifully designed big fish than the overblown and underdeveloped Alice. Agreed. Too much screwing about with what can we make appear to come out of the screen and too little attention to things like, oh, character and story. Big Fish was indeed a winner, and a vastly underrated film. Good review Rodney. Although I would go further in my own criticism of the film and say it is down there with Planet of the Apes for worst Burton movie. For a director with such visual flair and imagination as Burton, I felt the film was a total failure. It should have looked great, in a similar way Willy Winkus Factory looked great, but for me, it was lazy. Even Johnny Depp was out of sorts. Yeah, I couldn't figure out if it was a comedy, a drama, or something else that did end up as a bit of a mess and I agree with many who say the Red Queen was Helena Bonham Carter's worst screen performance. What a waste of all that money, right? I didn't fully dislike this film, in fact once I started seeing it from a kid's perspective it seemed enjoyable. Once I realized it wasn't intended for an adult audience I was irritated by the previews that were certainly geared to us Britain fans. It was a predictable film that worked for kids, most I know of thought it rocked, and with the visuals and characters I could see that, but it was okay for me, enjoyable to watch, but nothing that changed my life, and sadly disappointing. I can see how you'd get that it's aimed at kids, but I tended to think it was aimed more for adults and it simply didn't work. The film was quite dark, especially the rather vicious Red Queen and her henchmen, so that's why I felt it was more for adults, being a dad myself, I wouldn't let my daughter watch it any time, soon. So I guess, when you average it all out, who's the market for this film?
In the end, though, the main point is that we were both disappointed by it, and that's the critical.